Today we're going to look at a pair of in-wall Newtone stereo music intercom stations. So this is the model 2411 and this is the model 2412. And these speakers are used exclusively with the Newtone model 2400 stereo music intercom system from 1961. And we're just going to do a brief look at these today. These two examples are in kind of tattered condition because these are our in-shop testing stereo speakers and we use these when we work on 2400 amplifiers and AM FM tuners. So they're a little raggedy, but it's still take, worth taking a look at to see how these are put together. The 2411 is the A channel speaker and the 2412 is the B channel speaker, or you could think of it as right and left channel because it's stereo. The 2411 was referred to as the speaker with controls because it has the controls on here. And what you have is you have a volume adjustment for channel A for this station, and you have another volume control for channel B over there. And of course, these would be separated out across the room to spread out the stereo sound. Instead of having a single volume control that adjusted both of them at the same time, you could do each speaker individually. And it was pointed out in the catalog that that was done so you could achieve that perfect stereo balance when you're listening to stereo broadcasts or stereo records. 411 also has the intercom controls on it and the intercom conversation is carried through on the A channel throughout the entire system. It doesn't come out on the B channel at all. It's a very rudimentary intercom system. You have basically talk, and to call to someone in another room, and then they would go to their station and push the talk lever and reply. If you wanted to talk to the front door station, front door stations are called outside stations, not to be confused with patio stations because they did make outdoor versions of these also. To answer the front door, you would move the lever switch to the outside position, and the door speaker did not have a talk switch on it, so as soon as you move the lever to outside, you could hear the sounds on the front porch, and then you would move the talk lever to talk to ask who's there, and release it to hear the reply, and so forth. So it was a very simple design for back in the day. Both the 2411 and 2412 feature a solid walnut wood frame. The, it was pointed out in the catalog that these were hand rubbed walnut frames. The cloth material here, this is a material called Ceron fiber and Ceron fiber was invented by the Dow Chemical Company and the definition for it is it's a manufactured fiber in which the fiber forming substance is a long chain synthetic polymer composite fibers wear well, resist common chemicals, sunlight, staining, fading, mildew, and the weather. It can easily be washed with soap and water. It's not inflammable. It softens at low temperatures, which seems kind of odd, but the fiber is heavy compared to most apparel fabrics. It's used for upholstery in public conveyances, that would be buses or trains, deck chairs, garden furniture, etc. It's generally considered too heavy as a garment textile. And this stuff is quite thick and heavy and stiff. So it does seem to hold up well. However, it has that definite vintagey look to it. And I'm assuming that it is for the most part acoustically transparent, so it's not blocking any of the sound that comes out of the speaker. But I don't know that for a fact. I would have to do more research to find that out. So on the 2412, on the A channel, our control panel here, we have this anodized gold metal panel and actually this is the finish on this is referred to as champagne gold and champagne gold was a finish that Newtone used on lots and lots and lots of things all the way through the mid 1980s and then on the 2412 we just have a little Newtone nameplate right here to remind you of where it came from so let's go ahead and take a look at the back on the back we have the 2411 here and the 2412 here the 2412 is just basically it's a metal chassis and the speaker is attached to studs that are welded onto the metal plate and then it's bolted down with nuts. And there is this bracket here and here 
which is the same as the bracket here and here. So they were basically using the same chassis assembly for the A or the B channel, just leaving out the controls and the wiring because that would simplify manufacturing. Uh, this metal plate is held onto the solid walnut frame with these really large staples that go through holes in the plate all the way around. And there are these brass sort of eyelet rivety things here that go through from the front of the fabric through the back and that's where the mounting screws had gone and that was done so when you tighten down the mounting screws which had sort of large flat heads it didn't twist or mar up the fabric. Now I have seen people take these before and replace the fabric to make it more modern or contemporary for today's use and if you do that you do have to deal with the with the, um, with the rivets and oftentimes the easiest way to do it is to leave all this as it is and just put new fabric over the existing fabric. So let's take a look at our A-channel speaker and see what's up with that. One of the things that's important to understand about these speakers and the 2400 system in general is it is the third intercom model that Newtone ever made. And it's the very first stereo music intercom system that Newtone ever made. And it was designed to be a showcase piece. It was to give them some prestige and credibility in what they were doing. Because you have to remember, the first intercoms came out in 1957. And while they were not the first company to make residential music intercom systems, they were, I think, determined to become the most well-known. And the 2400 system and all of its bits and pieces, including these speakers, the designs were top-notch, first-rate, top-quality, spare no expense, and let's build a reputation around having quality systems. And everything about these speakers speak towards that. So down here we have one of our two volume controls. There's one here and one here. And then we have our two intercom switches here. You can see this really nicely designed wiring harness. It comes off the switches here and here, off the volume control. Wires go up to the, to the speaker terminals here, picks up wires from the second volume control, travels up this way, and then makes these really nice left-hand turns and it's all soldered onto the terminal strip here. Speaker stations would have all been hand-built. For instance, this wiring loom would have been handmade. And the way something like this would have been made back in those days is they would have had a jig that was in front of the person building the wiring harness and all of the pieces of wires and all of the correct colors would be pre-cut to length. And they would lay each piece of wire, probably in a very specific order, into the jig that allowed enough slack at this end so you had enough wire to go down to the volume control and then it went across and then these wires would have come up in the jig and go this way and some of them go down here and some of them travel to the left and then these wires from the second volume control would be added into the into the jig and then they would go up and there would be a predetermined spot for each one of these left hand turns where the different colors of wires come out and once all of the wires were placed in the jig and everything was bent properly then they would take this probably nylon tie string here and they would hand wrap the wiring harness and tie it at all of these points and tie the whole thing and this is the way it was done back in the day somebody actually sat there and actually made that it wasn't done by a machine it was done by a human being and then at some point, I don't know whether it was like Henry Ford and they had an assembly line or how it was done exactly, but the wiring harness would then find its way into the back of a station and somebody would place it in here. And then they would hand solder each connection down the terminal strip and hand solder each wire onto the terminals on the volume controls and onto the correct terminals on the two different intercom switches and build a speaker for someone. And this was an important part of quality control. And I can tell you, having worked on these before, everything here is of the highest quality that there was at the time. It doesn't seem like they cut any corners or spared any expense on what they were building at all. I have it, a brief overview of a pair of Newtone in-wall stereo music intercom stations, the 24. 11 and the 2412. I hope you found this interesting and perhaps helpful. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up on YouTube because that always helps. There'll be a banner right here that shows you how to subscribe. Go to our YouTube homepage, click on the bell or on the wheel, put in your email address, and every time we post a new video, you'll get a notification and you can watch it. That's all for today. See you on the next video.